Hi there, Mike Shope, Adam Krautwurst, The Deep End, brought to you by Player Profiler, May 16th, 2023. The proverbial dust has settled, the draft, and then the schedule. We've got our, our all our correlations figured out, I'm sure. I wanted to talk with Adam today, go through carefully uh, the first few rounds of a draft and what the best builds look like, what the trends look like, who's going to be moving, all that kind of stuff, so that when we embark on redraft teams or best ball teams, either best ball mania, more of a correlation centric thing, but the, the fantasy pros can be too over at FFPC. Just, you know, what makes sense as we see the trends develop here now that the schedule is out and the draft is over. So uh, we'll get started doing that. Thanks for watching, listening, whatever else you're doing to uh, be a part of our show here today. The deep end, Mike and Adam, let's go. Drafting with conviction, Michael. This is what we like this time of year, right? As much as we're going to get for a while here. Like we know as much as we're going to know for a long time, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and I heard you say, it's funny, I, I've been listening, you know, I'm diving into all the podcasts. I'm on the, the podcast tour, listening to everybody and reading. And it's funny, I heard you say uh, redraft. And it's just like, what, is redraft the term for non-best ball Non dynasty is that what is that what it is? As far as I know, lineups, I know. right? Lineups, lineups, yeah, exactly. Redraft means lineup setting. Best ball means best ball, and dynasty is dynasty. It's just funny because best ball is also redraft, and I always, you yeah. know, I always, I always uh, have trouble with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, the the fantasy pros one. I've been telling you on the show here for a couple of weeks. I feel like it's just a little bit weird. Okay. It, it still makes sense to me, and I still have not been convinced that I should abandon this thought that best ball mania and the FFPC best ball tournaments are so massively popular that when the fantasy pros is like triple the price or even way more than that compared with underdog compared with best ball mania, at least, I don't know, like people love not having to worry about the time they would need to spend on their lineups and on waivers to win. So not to say that the people who are not in those fantasy pros drafts aren't serious, but man, I've seen some strange things. I showed you a draft that I'm in the middle of where some of the rookies were just dropping by two or three rounds. Yeah. And like right now. And I think that that's just uh, unusual. So what do we all, what's our instinct to use your favorite word in that okay. situation is you want to be all over it. So I just keep, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of way out there right now in the deep end in terms of that tournament. Cause I never in intended to do several this early, but um <laughs> When Smith and Jigba and Addison and Johnston were falling by two two rounds or more in this draft, I'm texting you almost in a in like a frenzy. What, what's going on here? I don't I don't have a plan anymore. I'm just going to draft. I'm scooping the value at 101, and then I just told you like I'm doing another one. I'm not going to yeah. quit these until I get one where I feel like I'm really struggling. Yeah, no, that's that's what you're supposed to do. Get in there when you know. That's why a lot of people. And you know this too is a lot of people will do some now because we because we can't help ourselves, but also um, you know Memorial Day weekend. Memorial, what's the one? Mm -hmm. End of August. I get them confused. Labor Day. Labor Day weekend. Yeah, sorry. Um, Labor Day weekend when everyone's drinking and having a good time and all that, and that's when you want to get back in too. When you get kind of the the tur it's tourist season, right? Where everyone's like, all right, guess it's time to start drafting for fantasy. That's usually a pretty profitable weekend. And if you go back and look and Mojo does a fantasy Mojo does a lot of these re recaps, uh, a, a lot of the winners usually come from that time of that, that time of year. So, but you certainly won't want to want to get in now. Um, and even before the draft, when, uh, be before you knew where the, where these players were, were, were going to be going. Cause this tournament was open. The fantasy first championship was open before mm -hmm. the NFL draft. So. I would love to be able to attribute our, our friend's second straight main event title to drunkenness around Labor Day and the opening of the season, but that was in Vegas. Although there is sometimes drunkenness in Vegas. Sure. Uh, when, when they go, they started Kelsey Lamb in the main event at, at the 12 turn, which is just, you know. At the 12, right. Crazy. Come on, right? Just a beautiful start for them, and it paid off, as we know. All right, so uh, you, you know how I'm thinking here today, right? Just sort of. You're starting a new draft, and of course, even as early as the first pick, 
sometimes you want to be able to have a, an idea of what is coming depending on what you do with those very early picks. Justin Jefferson, and by the way, I want to say before we start, we are recording here on this Tuesday, so thank you for anybody watching on YouTube, uh, interested in chatting and interacting with us. You're going to have to go like through Twitter or another way because we're not on uh, live tonight. So right at the first pick, Justin Jefferson, the easy consensus at 101. We've got Fantasy Mojo up on the screen for those of you watching the draft board, ADP draft board for the Fantasy Pros Championship at FFPC. We'll work off that. I mean, it's a different setup than best ball, but um, still still useful. And we thank Darren at Fantasy Mojo for giving us permission to show this chart here on our, our video feed as we talk. Jefferson is the 101. You know, Adam, if you draft enough times and have the 101 enough times, you'll probably come off him here and there. But um, – Without an insane, A, an insane amount of drafts, uh, B, uh, maybe an inordinate 101 slots, are you just always on Jefferson? I think so. I mean, so just to kind of also add to what you were saying is this is a tournament. This is not, like you said, it's not best ball. You have to set your lineup. Um, so people won't have, you know, I don't know what the max is, but they're not, people generally won't, won't max this out because there's just not enough time to do waivers and set lineups for all these teams. Um, and so with that being said, like you're not like, if you max out like the, 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 the best ball mania, you're going to get, well, you're going to get 50 picks from the number one spot, but most people are going to get like, you know, 12 <laughs> to 15 number one picks. So you're going to take, you know, Justin Jefferson, whereas this, you might only get the first pick. If you're only doing 10 of these or 12, you only get the first pick once or twice. So you're taking Justin Jefferson, but I will say I have seen drafts, um, maybe not fantasy pros, but um, you know their their FFPC best ball tournament where I've seen Kelsey go number one. I've seen Christian McCaffrey go number one. So there are opportunities to get Jefferson shares outside of the number one pick. And I don't even think that necessarily Jefferson is like you know. There's been years I've been doing fantasy for so long and doing the the, the main event drafts, even going back to like going out to the event when I was a, a youngster uh, in the early 2000s, where you would get like. Okay, Priest Holmes is the number one pick in every draft. Marshall Falk, Ladanian Thompson, like every year there's that can't miss running back that everyone wanted to have. Um, even with receivers, I just don't feel that same thing around in Jefferson this year. I'm not saying he's not going to be yeah. the number one receiver. I'm not going to say, you know, he's not going to be the number one player outside of quarterback, but I just, uh, you know, He's fine. He's great. He's super safe. You're going to take him. If he doesn't get hurt, he's going to be in the top three or four. Fine. But there's, I think you can make moves for Kelsey. I think you can make moves for, um, for Christian, for, for, for Christian McCaffrey, for sure. And I mean, not for nothing. Cooper cup was better than Justin Jefferson was last year when he was healthy. So, I mean, I'm not saying take Cooper cup one, cause you can get him mid to late first in every, in every draft too, but there's some other players I like as good as Justin Jefferson. Interesting as we look at this grid on the screen with the ADP draft board for Fantasy Pros Championship, the pick 24, the 212 turn player is Hawkinson. This isn't a single draft. This is just the average. So Correct. a teammate of Justin Jefferson goes almost, well, in this case, by the average, exactly where you would pick second. Um your feelings on that sort of start, not receiver tight end necessarily, not only that, but going for teammates like that one, two, I guess there could be chase Higgins teams as well. Um, how do you feel about starting that way? Yeah. And again, another thing I do, I do like it. And another, th well, I like it. I hate the, the, the week 13 buy. it's just, that's right. what, that's what really like, I love it. That's what makes me keep. That's what keeps me from loving it. Is I just I, I the, the the week thirteen by stinks, and I know a lot of people will. You know, everyone knows you. You need to. You should stack. You should correlate and all that stuff. But then when you get in these um, underdogs where everybody's do, doing it, you know, a ton of people are maxing it out. So it's like there's going to be so many, um, like Jefferson Hawkins and teams, for an example. It's not necessarily the same way in this because again, there aren't as many teams. There aren't. I don't even know how many entries there are in the best ball mania this year. Tens of thousands, I'm sure. But the um, total number? Yeah. Six hundred and seventy thousand. Sure. Hundred hundreds of thousands. So 
you're not going to have hundreds of thousands of, of, of entries in this tournament. So you can feel comfortable doing stuff that other people are doing like Jefferson Hawkins. And a lot of people are going to do that. My only pushback against that again, is that week 13 by um, four. So it's the first round of, of your, of your, your uh, league playoffs. Um, and again, if you, if you're a one or two seed, you're already through and it doesn't matter, but not having your first two picks um, is not going to, be great and also should probably affect the rest of your draft. Like you should probably want to take a tight end a little bit earlier. Again, these aren't specific drafts. These are ADPs, but as you see Dallas Goddard in the same kind of range there, I don't know if I would necessarily go that high, you know, uh, two tight end starts two pr- premium tight end starts. Um, haven't been super um, efficient over the last couple of years, but you might want to go tight end a little bit earlier than you normally would when you take hot Hawkinson. Okay. Because of the bye week because okay. of the Bible. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I I started Jefferson Andrews in one of these. That's the one I was just talking about with all the rookies who are falling. Andrews by the way does also have a week 13 by even though he doesn't play for Minnesota. So th- that is tricky because I mean, we'll see as it goes how true this is this year. Last year and I think also the year before, it felt to me like waiting when you're picking at the beginning of the draft, if you're picking in the one slot or maybe even the two or the three, you got to get tight end figured out quickly. I think it's just too risky to wait until that Friar Muth and Joku Okonkwo range to get your first because then you want you want two pretty quickly or even three in that build. Probably not three in Fantasy Pros. You could. Um, so I like, or if I'm drafting at the one or e- on either end, really, like I want to get tight end figured out quickly because it's so easy to get stuck. And so with Jefferson, you have that particular dilemma, Hawkinson and Andrews, both in round 13 or the bye week, rather, in in week 13, that might sort of force you into thinking at four or five, you got to get somebody and that you're at the mercy of the the court on that one. As you look at this grid, I mean, Goddard, maybe, but after that, who is your tight end? Evan Ingram might be the best you're going to do, given the average uh, drafting here as we as we get started. Well, Jefferson has also been my number one. I might get bored with it, Adam. As you know, I get, I seem to get that slot a lot. And um, <laughs> I, I said to my son, like I was explaining to him why, you know, the, the conventional thinking is, well, if you don't pick Jefferson at one, you want to be different and have different builds and everything. But if you don't pick Jefferson at one, you won't get him. And then immediately I thought to myself, well, when am I getting McCaffrey then? Like I have to, I have to get enough twos and threes, you know, to keep up and have McC- enough McCaffrey teams or Kelsey teams, you know, and so far this season I'm, I'm shy on McCaffrey and Kelsey on this grid. Kelsey is the one Oh two. And he's also that in a draft. I'm in currently, I think I have that board up for you. If you wanted to look at that at any point, yep. but that, that is how it started. I'm not drafting one Oh one in that one. Um, I'm drafting sixth, but that, that started Jefferson Kelsey as well. I mean, I think that's exciting. As long as you just don't, you're not going to worry about Travis Kelsey's age. As long as you're not going to worry about that, everything else is is uh, arrows up. And I like how pick two, pick three, even if you start McCaffrey at running back there, I like what you can do in the next two rounds. Because it's a lot. You can do a lot in the next two rounds. Yeah, it, it opens you up to a lot a lot of things. You don't got to deal, you know, you don't got to deal with the bye week uh, problem that you have with Andrews Hawkinson in the second round, as far as tight ends, um, or the Justin Jefferson, uh, week 13 by. So yeah, no, it opens you up to a lot of things, in- including like not taking another tight end until, you know, you just want like a bye week filler, which you could even, you could get away with even like waiting in, you know, you could, you could get away with just a naked Kelsey team where you just take Kelsey in the first round and just wait till week eight or nine or seven of the regular season to pick up somebody because again this isn't this isn't best ball um, oh yeah that's what i would do totally and i would do that with andrews sure yeah yeah exactly so um so yeah it's it's like i like that you can also stack him usually yeah you can stack him like in the, in the adps i'm looking with mahomes and this person did not stack him with mahomes but um th- that's tough the kelsey mahomes stack is tough because now okay you've got your elite tight end you've got your elite quarterback you're probably not going to take either one, which is which is which is fine. I mean, you're not going to take any more, which is fine. So now you can spend the next 18 picks on, on every other position. But mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. you're going to be catching up somewhere. And, you know, according to, you know, who did this? I mean, he went Kelsey Chubb Hall, but even according to the 80 ADP, the next, you know, eight picks are receivers <laughs> in out, out of the two slot. So um, you're going to be, you're, you're going to be catching up somewhere. And, uh, but I, I don't, I don't hate this. Um, this start at all, this tight end running back, running back start from, from, from the tool. I actually really, really like it. Maybe not the players specifically, but I like that start. And then hopefully this person will continue to just, will just pound receiver for the next six rounds. Hopefully that, for their sake, not for mine. For, yeah. Not, not for your sake for theirs, but I could see, uh, absolutely. I probably would have gone maybe Chubb Ramondra Stevenson or something, but, um, but yeah, now you take the next six picks, all receivers, um, and, and so now you, you hope you have an elite tight end, you hope you have an elite running backs and then fill in the blanks at receiver and he'll still get some, he or she will still get some good, some good receivers still. So I actually really like that, that start. How do you feel about Chubb quickly? Like you've got a grouping of running backs here that I think people are sort of excited about from in this draft, as we look at it, Jacobs through Pollard, Henry, Chubb, Hall, Stevenson, I was ready to pick Stevenson at 306 had he not gone the pick before. Uh, it's interesting this year. It's different that there are running backs in that range kind of flipped from last year or two where running backs really kind of look good in that range. Yeah. I, you know, it's because it's interesting what we're, what we're having is with the, with the rise of the quarterbacks in ADP players and positions are getting pushed down. So what, what, what from like, Hey, the RB dead zone is rounds three to six. It might be, you know, rounds four to seven now because the quarterbacks are getting pushed up. So I like, I think Chubb's fine. I think, you know, the problem, you know, always get the art, like who's arbitrage Chubb. Like who can I wait at? Like I, I can, I would, I like Chubb over Najee Harris, but I would rather take Najee Harris around, around later than take, than take Chubb. Um, I'm trying to think Chubb, did he go early here? Uh, I know he actually went a little bit late here, but um, I think they're kind of the same. A lot of those guys are the same players. Chubb's not going to catch passes really. Um, hopefully that offense is better, but I'm that fine. Could, I'm that fine that could change, right? That could change, right? I mean, they still do not have a guy on that roster for that role. And it was sure. never that Chubb couldn't do it. It was right. like they signed Kareem Hunt and he could do it. Yep. And so I think their overall was just to sort of limit Chubb, which I feel like they'll still want to do, but um, it's unknown how they'll go about that, the Browns. Right. Let's um, take a quick break here. Mike Shope, Adam Krautwurst here on the deep end, talking through different strategies and new drafts, redraft or best ball, really, and just sort of how trends are developing and what's going to happen here, depending on how you start for you. But first, before we continue, a word from our sponsor. You know, people always ask me, hey, what is the, the World Series of fantasy or the Super Bowl of fantasy football? And it's easy. It's the FFPC, the Fantasy Football Players Championship. It's a $6 million prize pool. And they've had their never too early best ball leagues cranking since February. And so the FFPC is the answer to so many questions. Hey, hey, where's the best place to get a dynasty orphan? Well, you can adopt a dynasty orphan at the FFPC. That's why we partner with them. If you want to play fantasy football for low, medium, high stakes, seasonal, best ball, dynasty, go to the FFPC. And don't forget, promo code UNDERWORLD to get you $25 off your first team. $25 off your first team, no matter what team it is, no matter what format it is, at the FFPC. Go do it. Checking out these uh, draft boards, average draft position, looking at the Fantasy Pros Championship. So Jefferson, the consensus 101. Then you have Kelsey, McCaffrey, and Chase. Usually that's the order. Sometimes Tyreek sneaks in there. Eckler did in that draft I just showed. We just showed, I believe, Cup Robinson. I have. I think I would say my favorite start is 4-5 so far because I feel like that is is a – but an easy tier where you can pick whatever strategy you want to do. Like I mentioned before, I think you're going to be fine. If you go receiver with Tyreek or Cup in that range, you can guarantee yourself on getting a running back you're going to like in the second round. And in the third round, there might be stack potential or correlation or quarterbacks. Really, 
you know, anything can work, right? And any any slot could be the winning <laughs> one. But I, I'm loving four or five right now. Yeah, I was gonna say um, three. I was going to say one through four, like if you broke it up into segments, one through four, five through eight, nine to 12, like the cool thing about one to four is that you can, you can literally do whatever you want. You could start receiver, elite receiver. You could start elite tight end. You can start elite running back at four. You're kind of at the mercy of, okay, pick four J- Jamar chase. He gets the second best receiver. You don't really get um, the pick of the litter per, per se. Jamar chase is fine. He's going to be, he's, he's, he's going to be great, but yes, four, four or five. I, to- I totally see it. Um, and again, it depends on what you want to do. Like, are you, I know best ball is a little bit different for, for these fantasy pros and for like main events and stuff. Are you going to be a second round early third round quarterback guy? I think sometimes maybe if, as long as it correlates, I mean, chase Mahomes is great. Chase Burrow is not the third round. I mean, of course you can stack there, but Kansas city, Cincinnati week 17 yeah. you started on the draft we have up or have shown here, uh, Hill and Andrews. That's a week 17 game. So, but about as far as quarterback goes, there's some easy fits. AJ Brown and Hertz or Diggs and Allen, Mahomes and Kelsey, of course, are all pretty obvious. The Burrow gives you a couple options, Andrews and Jackson. It's funny how in the average here, Adam, the correlations do kind of line up just yeah. kind of randomly. Burrow Chase, Andrews, Jackson. You do uh you do have that here. Allen and Diggs again. So um, you know, what does everybody say? If you're drafting a lot, you don't want to be frozen out of the quarterbacks. And I think there'll probably be times, especially at a lower price point, when I would be perfectly happy doing that. Best ball mania, you know, let's let's start Brown Hurts or let's start Kelsey Mahomes, whatever that is. In this, I'd be a little bit more reticent to do that because unlike tight end, I am comfortable with what quarterback gives you down the road. I mean, I think Trevor Lawrence in the sixth round is a really exciting play and there's easy stacks uh, to go with Trevor Lawrence, you know, Jackson in the fourth round fields in the fifth round with the high ceiling all the way to Richardson. And you have Watson and Prescott in that range with Richardson. I'm okay. Like Tua and Daniel Jones in round 11 could even, I mean, they were both excellent last year, fantasy stars, you know, when Tua was on the field anyway, and Jones had great days. I don't know. Like, I, of course, understand the value in those elite guys, but um, I prefer to be patient, and I think you can be patient this year and be fine. I, I agree. Um, what's interesting, too, is is Allen is the QB3 here, whereas Best Ball Mania, he's the QB1, I, I believe, and I wonder if that has to do something with the bye week, with the week 13 mm-hmm. bye week. People are like, eh, I can get Hurts, who I think will be just as good or better, or Mahomes, and I can don't have to worry about that week 13 bye. Allen, you know, being would have had, would have been the number one fantasy quarterback three years in a row had it not been for losing out on the Bengals Bills game there. Um, but uh, so that that that's interesting. This is kind of where Allen was going last year. Was it like the three four turn? So he's kind of settled in there. Um, and so it really, yeah, it really just depends on how you're how you're trying to build. Um, I'm okay with waiting, but waiting this year now is you still have to move it up, right? Waiting used to be rounds eight or nine. Now it might be round six or seven, but the guy that I'm not going to be wait, like if I'm going to go for a quarterback, it's going to be Lamar. It's going to be a guy, like you said, like you like to pick in the four or five range right there at six, uh, the four, five, six range, you can get Lamar stacking with Andrews or take Lamar and then stacking with his receivers uh, that, that are, that are going much, much later. So um, he's a guy, I think Lamar is, is, is locked into a top four, uh, f- fantasy spot. So he's a guy picking from that four, five, six range that I would love to take. You know, I, I do sense that there's a lot of steam with Jackson. The yes. Thing is over and the weapons, everybody's making that point. And so anytime I hear anybody on Jackson, they're always very positive. Yeah. I've watched this player more closely than any other player in the NFL. I mean, that goes back to his Louisville days when I was voting for the Heisman. Like I, I just watch him very closely. He's my favorite player in the league. And, you know, you have this moment where, okay, Flowers and Beckham to go with Bateman and still Andrews, like new coordinator who everybody seems to love in the industry also. What an upgrade from zero to 100. Everything is, you know, green light special for the Ravens finally to be a good passing team. When I have watched Jackson, I mean, heavily invested in fantasy and, you know, I've got a a soft spot for him. When I've watched him 
it's I think you know there are times when he could go. You know what ex- how explosive a runner he is, and many times I think in the last year or two I felt like he just didn't want to. He didn't want to run. He was trying to maybe make the bigger point about his ability in the pocket or just being accurate with the ball. And you know what? I don't have that contract yet. You know how serious he was about that. And, you know, risk of injury, of course, when he did get hurt, that was in the pocket, and people sometimes miss that point. I, As Todd Monken and the Ravens are talking about, well, maybe in so many words, we don't need him. We shouldn't need him to run as much. I feel like he's going to run as much as ever because so many plays. You give him good protection, and sure, Flowers can separate, and, you know, Bateman and Andrews is always there for an eight-yard pass but I think maybe this year it will be the opposite it'll be sort of counterintuitive and he'll want to take off more which would be great for his uh, his fantasy investors we don't need him to make some break some new personal best in terms of passing yardage to get we don't even really want that necessarily to get the full value right. out of Lamar Jackson you want the you know 1200 yards and and the touchdowns the touchdowns dried up you know that's big contact I don't know like I'm optimistic optimistic for him and excited for him just like everybody else but maybe for in a different way yeah no i i agree with everything you said plus he uh last offseason he, he bulked up in the preseason maybe he'll do the same thing this year it's interesting too with the adp i, I really like dobbins i like the whole offense but how they're kind of paired together there andrews lamar yeah. dobbins in the same range so that would be an interesting uh spot. well let, let's talk about that let's just go a little bit deeper here so yeah. the 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 running backs you're at round in round five, and you know maybe it's that draft that I showed where I don't have a running back in the first three rounds. Really, Gibbs and Etn. There it is. If you're watching, who went later in round three along with Harris? That's maybe an inflection point where somebody's going to be really excited about Gibbs or even Etn, and they're going to want to put those guys up with Stevenson and Hall and in, in that range. It's not a big difference anyway, but if you don't. Then you're looking at what in the middle of the fourth round. It's it's kind of Aaron Jones. Maybe maybe it's early for Dobbins. It's early for Pierce. I don't know where what what is your thinking if you build a team like I have here at six as far as running back goes. Yeah, I don't really like like especially look at the eighty right now. The ADP in the fourth round is early fourth is Kenneth Walker and like right. mid to late fourth is Aaron Jones. I don't like either of those at ADP. I just feel like Aaron Jones is a guy. Like I feel like his time is like. Pass. I realized he was fine last year, but like, I don't know, maybe he has another year left in him, but I would rather be off a year early than a year late. They still have AJ Dillon looming. Not that I think he's very good, but you know, I would almost rather wait around and get like a Dobbins or a, or a Miles Sanders um, or something like that. Or even around after that and get a Pacheco. I just feel like Aaron Jones wouldn't be like my, my, my number one running back on a team, mm-hmm. you know? So what about Mixon? Uh, you know, I passed right over Mixon because I didn't even want to bring up his name. Mm. Uh, he's sure. I mean, it sounds, I was listening to who was talking about it yesterday. It might've been, uh, if I think of it, I'll remember, but they were talking about how the Bengals are really going for it this, 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 this year, right? Like they're, this is, this is their window, right? They've got Burrow. They've got all these studs under contract, but people are going to want to get paid soon. And Mixon somehow has made it through all of this unscathed so far. Like, it's going to be hard to imagine them going into this year uh, without Mixon and without adding like another running back. So I think Mixon might be there for one more year. And if he is like, if we get into, and he's a guy that'll rise, if we get into June, July, August, and he's definitely, you could see he's going to be there. He's at mini camp. He's at training kit. Like he's a guy who could end up in the third or fourth round and he probably should. Um, but he's a guy I would certainly take. Um, uh, I had an Aaron Jones if, the, if, if that's the case. If you, if you can show that Mojo ADP yep. grid again, I want to see what his uh, ADP is. Mixing five oh yep. seven, yeah, yeah, right, right there with Dobbins. I too love Dobbins this year. No, no real concerns about his health. The offense is exciting, and okay, they'll run less, but still, like he's no, there's no question he's the number one running back on what could be a, a very good offense. Um, I think I heard the underdog guys, Josh Norris and Hayden Winks, talking about. Cincinnati in that way. If that's, that's not who it was, I think okay, it was, it, both. it was actually Josh Norris on ETR is what, what, what it was. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like what is Cincinnati? I thought it was, it's the right point. If they're not going to 
have Joe Mixon be their starting running back this year, then who will be on a team that's like the second favorite or third favorite in the AFC? A backup, you know, a mid-round rookie? Like, they could swap Mixon for Zeke or Fournette, hypothetically, but why would you do that? I mean, that's not an upgrade. Right. So, yeah, I think um, Mixon is trending up, and, and that makes sense. Well, there's Austin Eckler, Adam, who I can't really get comfortable with at, at 106. In that range, I'm Robinson over Eckler. I'm more willing to take Cup, maybe A.J. Brown, Diggs. Like, I'm, I'm not – I'm not getting Eckler because I'm going to have to be at, it's going to have to be at 206 or 207 <laughs> for me to get to Eckler. Just there's too many, too many red flags for me. They're not really red flags. They're just sort of historical trends that I worry about his age and his size, different offensive coordinator. You know, somebody else is going to compliment him. And you would want to think they, yes or no. Like, will they want to, mitigate his workload a little bit not necessarily if he's basically playing out his deal with the chargers he's not at the voluntary workouts we know he's unhappy he literally said this offseason that the worst case scenario is playing on the deal he has for his current team i mean with all the with Bijan robinson and these other options in the middle of the first round it's brave i think to pick eckler yeah like you said age size um, new offensive coordinator, like the whole thing that makes Eckler so amazing is that he gets all the goal line touches. He gets all the, all the pass down, all the pass. I mean, how many games last year was Eckler just, he'd be at, at nine fantasy points. And then the last drive, he'd have like six catches yeah. for 80 yards. Like, and just, and just be, if you had him, you were ecstatic. But if they're not doing that, like if he's not going to be that guy, I mean, they, they brought a new offensive coordinator, um, who passes the who passed the ball to you know Pollard and Zeke got their share, but not the amount that Eckler was getting. And then, you know, they just drafted a big bodied wide receiver in the fir- first round to get vertical to push the ball downfield. Like I mean, all it takes is a little bit take a little bit away from Eckler and he drops out. You know, and it's about safety too. I think what, what you're saying is Bijan doesn't have the upside Eckler does, but he's outside of injury and probably like his injury upside is probably much greater. Uh, than 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 Eckler's at this point. Like Bijan's going to get the carry, he's going to get the goal line work. Um, again, his projectable stats, Eckler's going to be higher, but Bijan's safer for sure. Um, I I was out on Eckler last year. I was I was a year early. I was wrong. Whereas the year before, I was on him and he was great. I think I'll probably be off on him a little. Be, again, because like I like Cooper Cup over him. I like all the receivers over him there. I think where you get to Eckler for me might be at like the like the eight, like I'd probably take him over AJ Brown, um, but after John, Jonathan Taylor, you take Taylor over him, probably, probably, yeah, just for just, again, just for the safety pur- purposes. Although Taylor was hurt, was hurt a little last year too. With Taylor, the the big variable is Richardson, and right. you know Taylor in that smash year two years ago had all the touchdowns. He just. You know, everybody loved his talent and rushed to pick him 101 last year, but it was right to be sort of wary of the touchdown regression fairy. And uh, she did come for Jonathan Taylor last year. So, you know, that's an interesting range as we get down the list here. I, I'm I'm willing to take Robinson as early as five. You know, I've done that a, a couple times. I think he does have the, the highest ups as high an upside as anybody. Um, I'm, I want to be confident enough in the rest of that offense and in that scheme to think that, I mean, picked in the top 10 of the draft, that Robinson can have a super high upside. He can do it all. Um, so after him, you've got that group of receivers there. You want to rank those like Brown, Diggs, Lamb. They're pretty, maybe even Devontae Adams as well. Let's, let's include Devontae Adams. Like the, that group of four that are all in line. The ADP from Fantasy Mojo for the Fantasy Pros Championship of late is Diggs at 109, Brown at 110, or rather 111. Read the bye week by mistake. Diggs at 109, Brown at 111, Lamb at 112, Adams at 113, or 201, I should say. Yeah. Um, Do you have a strong preference there? I mean, you said something sort of negative about Brown a second ago. Well, I just think, you know, he's got so much competition there. Uh, but I do like him after Diggs. I like Diggs, Brown, and then believe it or not, you're going to hate this. I like I like Garrett Wilson after that. Um, I just think that he has a chance at 160 or 70 targets. If he can get on 
same page. It's the plus it's those end zone. Like Rogers loves to throw to the receiver. Think Devontae Adams. Like if he gets that really good receiver, he's going to throw touchdowns from the one yard line. <laughs> so like mm. he has a, he has a really high upside there, you know, really great college prospect coming out of a high. Like he's just been awesome. And so I'd like to, I'd like to get him up in a range where um, I can get him lamb. The Cowboys offense scares me. All they're talking about is we want to run the ball to keep our defense healthy. Like I love lamb. I had a ton of lamb last year. So again, I'm going to mix it up, but I'm going to have Garrett Wilson up in there too. In that mix with Brown and lamb. Um, I'd like to put Garrett Wilson just right there with him or just ahead of lamb. I actually don't hate that at all. I think it's really smart. Because the the veteran guys that I just listed, you you can talk yourself into a little bit of concern for any of them. You know, uh, with Diggs it would be age. I don't think it's going to be Dalton Kincaid's role. I feel like with Diggs, I'm not going to. I choose not to worry about sort of the the tantrum at the end of the year. Stephon Diggs, he's his own guy. Yeah, you just have to you have to wonder about age with him, and there's no sign of decline yet. So uh, it, it's a it's a little bit of a forced argument to be sort of worried about him. I think he belongs in the first round. A.J. Brown, for me, also belongs in the first round. Still young, great offense. I think everything is fine there. You know, in terms of competition, not different than last year. And what you get out of A.J. Brown last year? It was it was tremendous. Lamb, with the offensive coordinator change, it is hard for me to get sort of comfortable with Dallas because of Mike McCarthy. I just – I, I got to be careful because I've always been drafting those guys, you know, Pollard and I'll, I'll always with the crowd that wants to talk up Prescott, you know, going back to when I used to have to listen to people say that Wentz was not only better than Prescott, but there wasn't even a discussion. You couldn't even be believed if you thought Prescott was better than Wentz. I still have some residual when it comes to that, my sports radio life. And, you know, Adams is Garoppolo and, you know, age two, but just that's different. Amon Ross St. Brown comes in before Garrett Wilson by one spot in the ADP. And that's a little bit more complicated now, although Jamison Williams will miss the first six games. So um, still young and really good. It's, it's kind of, I'll make the, the Dallas point a little bit here, Adam. Like I just do not accept the Detroit lions as a sharp franchise. They, <laughs> they had some games last year. They almost made the playoffs. Also, they didn't make the playoffs in a super weak conference. I, I mean, it's Jared Goff, Listen to the coach or the GM speak. I just don't trust it at all. I don't think Jameer Gibbs at 12. You know what the Lions – so this also is – I heard this from the Underdog Show, and I plan to bring it up on WGR as well, how the, the Lions GM talked about how it, how impressive it was to him that his first picks all played in their bowl games. There you go. Like, that is, that is old school football. High right character, there. guys. <laughs> High character because – they were not looking out for the investment of their future. They instead were like, go state you. I mean, just, I can't, I'm not betting on a team like that. You know, that sucks to me. Like I, I can respect it. I, I don't, I don't criticize the, the decision to play, but I don't either criticize the guys who, who chose not to. And I am not, giving any sort of an investment fantasy is fantasy. And that's what we're here to talk about. I'm, I'm not betting on the lions. I feel like that is just, it's, it's still the lions to me. I know it's so funny. Like you were, you were the Amon Ra guy last year. I was, I was not, and you were dead right. Um, I, I just can't see him not continuing to do what he's been doing, you know? So I've got him fantasy wise. I've got him right up there with like, I just love the, like if you're going looking to go receiver, um, the back, it, like it always is, right? The the back end of the first is usually always uh, receiver heavy. Um, it's nice to see receivers drop a little bit in like underdog. You know, the first six picks are like receivers and Kelsey. You know, so it's like when you get into the FFPC, you can get a little bit more of okay, I can mix and match. I can get a little Amon Ra, Diggs, Garrett Wilson. You know, Adams is a guy that's falling for me because of Jimmy G and Adams disappeared. At I had so many Adams Diggs teams that were sensational and then they got to the playoffs and they just died all of them. And so <clears throat> Adams has a, has was already kind of had that little lull there at the end on top of new quarterback on top of, um, you know, that holds him, him getting older. So I could see Adams falling um, off and lamb again with that offense. But I like, I like Amon Ra up there with them. 
I have oh. to. I, my my instinct is to agree on Adams, like with Myers there, and still Renfro and tight end investments, draft and free agency. I don't know. Is Garoppolo the guy who's going to be good enough and choose to just feed Devontae Adams for him to pay off? I know Mike Leone thinks, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, that Adams is a great pick in that range, and I almost feel like I should defer to that, to, to, to Mike. But um, I'm not feeling that either, which all of this, to our original topic here, like the better draft positions and what the build is, it can it doesn't feel great for me in the back third. You know, there's each one of these guys in terms of the running backs, Taylor with the Richardson point, and will they even be efficient at all on offense? Indianapolis. Um, I want to. I'm excited for Richardson too, but I don't know if they'll actually be good enough to generate fantasy points for the the other people on the team. And, and Barkley, Barkley is probably still Barkley. A lot to like about the offense. Uh, maybe I'm just a little bit bored. With, with Barkley, but I think if I really think about it hard, I'd put him at or near the top of this grouping. If you take seven, eight players there at both positions, but the eight guys you, you see there, I think I'd be Barkley over Taylor. I feel like the contract thing will work itself out. Um, so that's okay. And then you just got to sort of hit and hope with the other guys, good or great players, but each with a little bit of reason for concern. Interesting. I don't know. Like, I don't want to get the 110. In a, in a fantasy pros draft right now. Yeah. The one time never looks good. Uh, the one night you're like, Oh, I, I'm not, I'm not at the turn. I'm not right next to the turn. You know? Um, no, I, I, I agree. I want to be, I would like to be in the top, in the top four or, or the top, the, the top three really. So I can set the stage for what, for what I want to do. If it's receiver, if it's tight end, if it's running back, I can start that way. Um, but I don't necessarily hate being at the back end. Cause again, a lot of these, um, lineup setting leagues um, I like kind of going zero RB or hero RB. And I think you, you, you could do that. You could do that with a, with a Taylor or a Barkley or if Bijan falls or if Eckler falls, if you get in a super heavy um, receiver draft and then you can start with your running back and then just load up on receivers and, and stuff. Now I don't necessarily like the receivers that are going on like the three, four turn. It's like Calvin Ridley, I think it's way too high. Do you? Oh Yeah. I mean, it's been, he hasn't played in like two years. Like we were talking, Calvin Ridley was awesome, and then he he was having um, he was having issues, so he stepped away from the team, and then and then he got suspended. So he was already having some personal issues go, go, going on. You know, he hasn't played in two years. It's not like he's some like alpha receiver. Like I like him, I liked Calvin Ridley. I had him on some dynasty teams. I've been holding on to him, but. I mean, there's so many weapons there. There's so many weapons there that they that they that they can use, including Evan Ingram, including ETN, the pass game, which they didn't really use him. So Kirk is two rounds cheaper, and I'd yeah. rather have Kirk. Also. Yeah, Zay, they Zay flashed last year. You know, um, main event right. champs will tell, will tell to tell you that. So um, yeah, no, I'm I don't I don't I don't like that at all. But that's that's a spot where I could be maybe persuaded to take a one of those top three quarterbacks or maybe even to say, you know what, I'm going to go Lamar at the beginning of the fourth. I bet if this were a, an actual board and not an ADP board, you would also maybe like to have team nine Diggs, Garrett Wilson Diggs with Allen, you know, yeah. as quarterback three in the third round, you keep going at receiver, you know, you didn't like the running backs in round four. You said you got left out of the running backs in round five by this ADP board for those not watching that's Dobbins will cook and then Do Dalvin cook Dobbins Mixon, Miles Sanders. You go McLaurin at five Oh nine and you've got four receivers and your quarterback. You didn't do the quarterback and the tight end. So you still, you can really clean up at running back, which this not real team did with <laughs> Pacheco, who you said you liked Montgomery at seven Oh nine. Maybe he's probably their starter. Uh, James Cook could be the Bills starter, and then Brian Robinson in this case, and then Bateman. That could, that's a, looks, like, looks like an Adam team to me. That's right. That is definitely an Adam, an Adam team, an Adam build uh, for sure. The, the, and then again, just do, why the Ridley? Back to Ridley. Why is Ridley just? What, is if I missed something? If they come out and said, "Oh, he's our number one by a mile," like I don't understand. I mean, that the four one, like that's wild. Well, it's a little bit of you know, what your taste is for receivers in that fourth round, if that's what you want to do. The receivers in the fourth round by this chart are in order. Ridley, Debo Samuel, Keenan Allen, Hopkins, and DJ Moore. 
And, you know, sort of the, the air is cool on all these guys. We'll see if Hopkins ends up not getting traded or whatever. You can, I, I thought he was worth drafting before the NFL draft because it sounded very much like he would be moved and now it doesn't. So I think things are a little bit cooler on him because of that because you'd assume he'd be traded if he were traded to a good team, to a great offense. DJ Moore, you know, kind of lukewarm for DJ Moore, a player that fantasy is usually hot for all the time. So, I mean, I think he made the right points on Ridley. Allen, Keenan Allen for me is good. I, I like to, to stack him. I mean, every team I maybe have had Keenan Allen on in the last three years has had Justin Herbert on it too or some correlation. I don't really like having feeling like I'm leaning on him, but there's still value there. Just as long as he can stay on the field, that's always the thing. Yeah, um, it's not a great receiver zone in, for those players in round four. Rounds five – or round five, Watson from Green Bay, Drake London, Jerry Judy, then McLaurin. And then you're pretty much, you're close to getting into the rookies. Um, some of them anyway. Very interesting stretch there because, you know, the the new world just loves receivers, tends to love receivers in those rounds. And this year, I think it's harder to. Yeah, I think it's because a lot of them got drafted on each other's teams. So it kind of pulls that down. A lot of them have quarterback concerns you know um there's just guys i mean i don't mean that harp i just that, that whole range there like i like allen better I like, I like allen better than ridley i like mclaurin better than ridley i like deontay johnson two rounds later like you know mm-hmm. hall of famer mike evans in round seven i mean a lot of the guy you know guys that could do what calvin ridley will probably do this year but we'll see burks burks in round seven burks i do like burks too if they can i mean he could be a target hog for you know, for their t- teeny tiny p- passing attack, they're not going to throw. Ugh. You know, like, well, they could be losing, and maybe that would open them up a little bit, sort of force them to. What, what I feel like I'm figuring out here is rounds four through seven at wide receiver. I'm I'm kind of in a player take mood, I think, with these guys, because some of them I like a lot. I mean, yeah. Jerry Judy at 505, I like that a lot. I think he will be Denver's clear number one. And yep. with Sean Payton, there's a decent chance that that, that, that takes off. Yep. Um, Godwin at 602. Godwin is excellent and maybe a bad team, but also maybe that means losing. And I don't know, Evans, older by comparison, I feel like that's good. I also agree on Deontay Johnson. Pickett showed well in the second half last year. Easier schedule. He's the best receiver on that team, I believe, over Pickens. So and he's had some bad touchdown luck in his career. I feel like Deontay Johnson is is a good play. Uh, Lockett, Burks, Ayuk to start seven, and then Marquise Brown at the end of that round, and then you're you're back to more of the rookies. So I, I have guys in this range, and I tend to try to talk myself out of player takes. What have I heard? What's consensus? What do the numbers show? And then okay, well, how do I feel? But it's not a comfortable position. But in the, in those in those few rounds in terms of wide receiver i'm hot or cold and i'll end up probably i'll end up drafting several of those guys all the time and some of them neither which is dangerous yeah no i, I agree it's definitely a lot of players and it's 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 early my gosh it's may there's going to be coach speak there's going to be uh you know stuff out of camp there's going to be injuries with that that's going to clear up a lot of these situations but um but yeah there's a bunch of Guys, I like in there, but you know, I mean, I, I would love to love Katerius Tony. I mean, I, I remember saying last year in the playoffs, Katoni made a play. Katoni, Katerius Tony made a play, and I'm like, man, I'm gonna have so much Tony next year. The next play, <laughs> the next play, he hurts himself like running, <laughs> just like collapses to the ground. I'm like, okay, never mind. But um, I want to love him too. You know, there's just a lot of it's a lot of value this year. I think at receiver Bateman round round ten. You know, different different guys that have really high really high ceilings. I think. So just sort of a broad comment or two at the end here of our show, like based on where you're drafting, I mean, first round, you can do almost anything for me and somewhat for you. End of the first round is a little bit uncomfortable in terms of the players, but you can still build the team you want. Like you said, you can kind of build the zero RB or anchor RB teams you like down there. Got to figure tight end out when you're on the ends and that bye week issue might make it tricky if you're starting with uh, Jefferson. It could be a reason to start with someone else. You know, if you thought Andrews or Hawkinson were a goal in round two, although that can, you can get sniped on that too. Hawkinson went 204 
in the draft of mine that uh, we showed earlier. So anything can work, Adam. But um, conclusion, put me, you know, four, five, six, and you like even the top three, uh, which is fine too. I, I'd rather be top half than bottom half for sure. Yeah, top three in the FFPC for sure because that Kelsey point and a half per catch definitely helps. Um, and for like right non non tight end premium. I could pretty much pick pick wherever as long as uh, the players kind of kind of land right. We'll get into some dynasty next week. It's that time of year too. I mean, rookie drafts mm-hmm. are in full swing. A lot have already been uh, wrapped up, and see what the trends are for that. We'll have rookie mini camps around the NFL OTAs as they call them to to talk about and, and go over. And so, uh, very much dynasty season two, and we'll we'll put some of the focus on dynasty next week. Adam, uh, at Adam underscore Krautwurst, your draft guy. You're involved heavily in flag football. People know that about you. And poker. Yes. What a life. Who has more fun than people? Come on. What a life. That's right. You got your kids going. Everything's good there? Family? Yeah, everything's good. The kids have been playing flag. I got more soccer tournaments this weekend. Flag football. It's oh. just, it never, it never ends. It never, it's fun though. I love it. Soccer for you, lacrosse, baseball, hockey for me was in Canada over the weekend. Plus, my son had lacrosse games and baseball games, but uh, it's the best. It's the best. You can follow Adam at Adam underscore Krautwurst. You can follow me at Shope Talk, S C H O P P T A L K, or listen to me on the afternoons here in Buffalo with the Bulldog, Chris Parker, weekdays from three to seven on the Odyssey app, A U D A C Y. And we on Twitter are at Deep End FF1. Why don't you take the, the, the reins on following, subscribing. I always feel like I bungle that. Oh, um, yeah. I don't even know what to do there. Everyone, I was so oh, no. good at it. Like it, subscribe, follow, um, just listen. And if you have any questions, hit, hit us up because we're going to be doing drafts all year. Uh, we love, we're going to have guests on. If you want, if you want to hear from guests, let us know. Uh, Mike, Mike knows everybody. He's, he's very, he's a, he's a humble legend. So he'll, Oh, he can get whoever you want to listen to. Okay. Subscribe or follow iTunes and Spotify, especially that helps us a lot. Yes. Helps people find the show. And yeah, I had a nice long chat with Pete Overzet on his best ball late night feed on Saturday night. Uh, I was really excited to connect with him and talk about basically doing this in addition to just fantasy football, but sort of the hosting side of things. Uh, I thought that was a, a great conversation. You can find that through Pete, through his uh, network of networks. <laughs> basically, he's got it all. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching or listening or both today. Hopefully, if you watch, you listen to Mike and Adam. We'll see you next Tuesday here in the deep end. See you guys. Hey, you like that video? Be sure to subscribe and activate those alerts so you get notified as soon as new videos drop. And be sure to check out playerprofiler.com. We have all the tools for you to dominate every type of fantasy league. We have a draft kit, Dynasty Deluxe, Data Analysis, DFS Dominator, and don't forget the player rankings to rule them all.